you know, I think after uh, the production that we had in terms of just lacking the execution, like, we respect the Bills a lot. I mean, that, that team uh, going forward, I respect the Raiders. Obviously, I have a history with a lot of people there, even the D coordinators. We have a lot of respect there. But you try not to get too high too low, but losing, it hurts. You know, it's painful. But you lose, you try not to let that loss carry week two. You try to learn a lot. Especially there's a lot to learn. Like we said, we're trying to learn from things from New England. You're going to try a uh, chance to learn again. Because the goal is never to be peaking right now. There's something to always learn from. If you get your focus on taking it one game at a time and trying to improve every week, week in and week out, I think uh, that's when you you know you're doing things that are right. What is every starting job open this week? Because I, I know you mentioned we'll play the best five. Mm -hmm. Are you taking a fresh look this week where all five of the jobs are open heading into Wednesday? I think you should. I think you should usually and mainly if a, if a guy you know obviously head 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 and uh, shoulders above it, it'll produce like you'll just see it on the tape. Like you know a guy can speak ball all day, but can you put it on the field? You know, I hit, hit the line with it. I hold myself to the same standard where, you know, I can say something, but what does your actions do to back it up? So when we get out there, you know, whatever group's out there doesn't mean it won't switch throughout the day, the next day, at any time. So when you're out there, you got to just take one play at a time, focus on your fundamental uh, techniques and execution. And if you do that and you're consistent, then we produce at the end of the day, end of the week, we'll see what best five we have available. Greg Manz is a starter. Is that a scenario that's crossed your mind at all? I think any any guy, especially how it has it plays out in the NFL right now, almost any any guy can be a starter week one. You see plenty of times where a RB or somebody's been inactive or on the P squad in a week by Sunday he's playing. So any guy in that room, I, they all get trained the same during individual. They all get trained the same during the meeting room. I look at them if you're on this in this group and expect you to be trying to compete at whatever it is to put yourself because you're one play away from starting. So. The best five, whoever it may be, that's what you want on the field to uh, represent the Dolphins. Daniels, there's a question of sliding uh, and calling protections. Uh, with the running back there, is that something that the running back has to identify? The quarterback signals to him? Does the center even from up front uh, communicate that? It, like I said, it's a big, like, it's, it's really a joint thing where we've got to stay throughout the week, talk throughout the week, show, these, show them these things throughout the week where we all got to be on the same page. So there's times when, you know, the center might be starting something, but there's like the levels to it, right? There might be someone with a QB saying something, and there's levels to it. So if one guy has this picture and another guy has this picture, and we're not on the same page, in the NFL all the time, that's where you see mistakes happen. So the big thing is, it shows you all that work in communication, I think in anything, I mean, it kind of shows in life, that you got to work in communication constantly, right? And, and we talk about times when you guys are talk in the locker room, on the field, outside the locker room, I told him, go play the video game, whatever it is. Keep working your communication or it rolls over. Given the amount of draft picks on your line, I don't have to tell you, an awful lot of high draft picks mm -hmm. on your line. Mm -hmm. what is, how big is the gap between the production you're getting mm -hmm. and the production you should logically expect of these high draft picks at this point in the season? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I guess that's because we say is like I think about my own journey. Naturally, go to my own journey being an undrafted guy, and you know, uh, I think it, the draft is always cool. And I heard from from one of the, my great teammates, Rob Gallery. Like, you know, you got you got to really high from the Raiders. Like people were mad at me he said that you should have performed better in college. So you know, a lot of times in the draft, it's kind of you know, uh, uh, a projection of what the guy's going to be anyway. Like you don't know till you get to this level. That's why you see a lot of guys who are late draft picks, undrafted, come in there producing. Right? Oh, you're all surprised. When you get to this field and this level, that draft pick is all nice, but it's gone now. You got to perform on the field week in and week out. So uh, I think the guys on my line, like fortunately, they understand that they were drafted in a certain position, so they do carry that weight. So that's part of helping them manage. It. Like you know what, guys, remember you got to be your, your hardest critic. You know you got to have your hardest expectation even more than me. And I think my, my group does that. And so the production, as we see, is really more of the, going back to the using the techniques and, and the fundamentals in the communication and then not only like learning it and getting that experience but working hard to match on this practice field so on the game day it produces so everybody sees like oh you're this draft pick oh I see it why you know so it's really kind of just keeping them going and also myself just staying on the details with them and just being on there with them. When it's still very early in the career of Austin Jackson, yep. Rob Hunt, Liam Eikenberg, mm -hmm. I want to ask you those three specifically mm -hmm. are you convinced that Austin is a left tackle, Rob Hunt is a right guard, 
Liam as a tackle for now, who can play guard. Mm -hmm. Are you convinced those three guys are at their right position where they will be the best NFL versions of themselves, or is it simply too soon to know with any of those guys might further experimentation be needed? Those three specifically. Mm -hmm. So Austin. Yeah, Austin yeah, 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 as a left tackle, yeah. Robin as a right guard, Liam as a tackle rather than a guard. Mm -hmm. Are they where their NFL <coughs> success will be, or is it not clear yet to you because they're still early in their career? It is, it's, it's, you, you use the term like the most, and I mean, I'll I use my example, for example, right? I thought uh, a worse from Tampa, I thought him coming out with him like an a all pro, pro bowl guard. I'm like, man, you put him a guard, he can just dominate. Well, obviously, he's a pretty good tackle, too. So in terms of, of saying, hey, is the guy where he needs to be, is he best right now? I think those three guys, you see, they all have a skill set that's going to make them really good players if they continue to go because of those projections. Um, we see them at spots in terms of Austin. He's always been a left. So we've seen him mainly at left. So what we do this week, what we do going forward, I, I don't know. I know he's, a, he's really quick, really strong. He cares a lot. You know, he shows his emotions a different way because we have that, that relationship where I, can, I know where he is. But he cares a lot, you know, same thing with Rob. We've seen Rob at right tackle, we've seen Rob at right guard. He's playing on the left side in college. It doesn't mean, you know, if there's a need to be something happens that he won't end up being there. And so obviously we've seen Liam already in a short time. We've seen him in games at left, right, and in preseason we've seen him at guard. So it's the best five truly because when you get a guy who, let's say, is really good at left tackle, and if he's an individual, he can man block and he's out there, but he's creating spaces where now the guard's not getting quite as much help, he's getting teased, stunts. And now, you know, we can't pass off games. Yeah, he's a good tackle, but he's really one of the best five as five playing as one. So that's why you hear the thing like, hey, yes, these guys are in places. If they're our best five guys and there can be a cohesive unit, then you'll get that production on the O-line. You've been, uh, there have been four offensive line coaches here in 28 months. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Beer obviously has provided the coaching staff with high offensive right. traffic. Yeah. How much of a burden do you feel to be the guy to help this group finally become an effective offensive line? Is that a burden you carry yeah. every day? Do you feel it when? Burden. Uh, yeah, I guess that word, uh, some people, it's like how you train, things like that. Um, your own personal experiences in terms of the word burden, it doesn't hit me like that. I think no matter if, you know, I was in a situation with a whole bunch of vets who were pro bowlers, or with a young group, uh, I, I don't change how I attack it, how I, I, I work, the, 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 the weight I already feel in terms of trying to do my best to help these guys do their best and help people around do their best. There's, there's what's happened before me, uh, what will happen after me is not my concern, it's really today one thing at a time. So you're an offensive line coach, yep. but part of your job is also figuring out what the other guys are going to do. For sure. Looking at the film of the Bills game, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you're the Raiders defensive coordinator, how are you going to attack this line? What do you expect? Gus, yeah. Like I said, previously I was with Gus when I was young and in Seattle. Gus was the D coordinator in, uh, in Seattle. And I mean, one thing you know about Gus, you love Gus. I mean, one thing, he, he's not going to try to trick you. He just wants to attack. That's what he wants to do. He wants guys to be you know, fundamentally sound, you know, what they're doing, and play fast. He don't want them overthinking. So one thing he'll do, just like Buffalo, these guys will attack. I mean, that's what you saw on, on film, see if you can get these guys playing as individuals at times, with the technique at times. Because in the NFL, you know, you, sometimes you see things, right? We're driving, we're driving, and all of a sudden that one play where somebody just doesn't do their, their job, all of a sudden they may take advantage. Now there's a, there's a momentum shift. So if I'm watching us, it's like, all right, we're going to come with our own plan. We're gonna, I know Gus, he, they're going to play their ball. They're not going to try to just create something new or try to mimic something they've never done. He's going to like, yo, I know what I'm doing. Our guys know what they're doing. I'm putting them in the best position to play fast, knowing that whatever we do, this is how you got to defend it. And then if, if they hit you on something, maybe well, they might come back. They, they might not. But they're going to just play fast enough the field and beat. I know they're going to be where they're supposed to be, and I, I know that. Some fans and some media obviously overreact off the game. Uh -huh. Some fans and some media overreact off the game. Yep. There was a lot of sky is falling. Oh my God, mm -hmm. what if Austin Jackson, Liam Eikenberg, and Rob Hunt, and Solomon Kenley, and Michael Peter, all these high draft picks don't develop. Right. Uh, can, can you walk people off the ledge in terms of, do you feel those five have NFL skill sets that you still feel a confidence these five players, or most of them, will become quality NFL starters? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna be biased, so before we start the conversation, I'm high on my guys just because there's other things I know and I've learned from them off the field anyway. Um, the sky is not falling. This is uh, a learning opportunity. Uh, we, di we didn't have the outcome that you wanted, 
and it's because you can. The thing, the best thing is when we lost and there were mistakes, you can look back and if you can notice the mistakes, and some of you guys can speak on the mistakes themselves. It's like now as we mature even more day by day and learn, they can get to the correcting of themselves on the field and practice stuff like that. So the, the thing is, I look at character. Like I said before, I care the character a lot. The character of those guys you've mentioned, plus the guys who you didn't mention, like even the Greg Little we had, Mans. You know, um, who else have we got? I got uh, my, Rob Jones, of course. Like all these guys. You know, even the guys that we have not acted right, Lar Larnell. He's still in the meeting room. You know, um, you know Cam. We got Cam from New Orleans. Like all these guys, and their character, how they work with each other, and they try to grow, is, is really off the charts. And I think, you know, with a lot of things, you want things to be great. It's got to be uncomfortable. Sometimes things happen in a negative way early. And I told the guys, like, you know what? This is what you want to happen. If it's going to happen, let's learn from it now rather than later in the season. You know? And so I, I'm high on my guys. I'm going I'm to go with my guys no matter what. We're in this together. So that performance, like I think everybody should know, is not on them alone or that individual alone. I take a lot of that, per se, burden on myself to do whatever I got to do to get it right.